What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Best Self Blueprint. For those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, the mission of this podcast is to share knowledge, insights, and experiences that will hopefully move that dial towards you becoming the best version of yourself, whatever that means to you. So today, I have a guest that's been in business for well over two decades, helping people through courses, private coaching, retreats, online content, and much more. She started by founding Body Temple Yoga, then in 2021 stepped into another arena by founding Heart Wisdom Leadership Academy, and now most recently, which I'm sure she's excited to talk about, she's stepping into sharing her vast knowledge around biohacking for entrepreneurs and business owners. Her combined knowledge of biohacking, business, and mind-body practices allows her to make a deep impact on those who want to succeed across the board in their own lives. So let's introduce... Daniela Catro. Wow. Thank you so much for that intro. Spot on. Nice to be here, Trevor. Thanks for having me. Of course. You did all the work. I just I just told people what you did. So <laughs> my job's easy on that part. But I, I want to dig into, there's a quote that I heard early on in doing my due diligence on you, where you mm -hmm. said, the mind interferes with the wisdom of the heart and that the heart has a voice. So it's a two-part mm -hmm. question to kick things off. First, how can we differentiate the mind from the heart? Because both have their their voices that chirp at us. So how do we yeah. differentiate the two? And I guess call it 1B, what does the heart sound like? Mm, I, it's, it's amazing how many times I've been asked this question. And, how, and, and it's a big question and it's a common question that uh, and a fair question that so many people ask. So great, what, great way to kick this off. Um, okay, so to start with uh, part one, first I'll just say that we, we're all aware of the, the head to heart battle, right? Heart saying one thing, head saying another thing. And what I recommend to people often is, and this is how I've been able to do this too, is to be able to take the seat of the witness, to take a step back and just observe and witness the dialogues that are going on here in the head and the dialogues that are going on in the heart and start to take note of the differences because they're very, very different and, and where ultimately they're pointing. So what I mean by that is if we were to observe the dialogue in the mind, typically it's uh, restricted, it's limited, it's negative, and it's like, don't do that, stay where you are, stay boxed up, you know, don't move. It's a lot, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of limitation, um, there's a lot of, and it can go negative as well. And it can basically talk us out of anything, um, that we want to do. It has that capability and that's the voice of an unchecked mind, right? There's, there is a way to cultivate, right? Our minds and there's practices for that, but typically an uncultivated mind, unless you've worked on it, this is what we're dealing with. Right. And then with the heart, if we're tapping in to the deeper wisdom of the heart, so I'm not talking about unchecked emotions either. <laughs> I want to make that differentiation too, because that can get all lopped into the same box. And that's not what I mean. So when we're tapping into the wisdom of the heart, we're tapping into our deeper knowing. We're tapping into an aspect of who we truly are, our true self, our innate wisdom, the wisdom that we came in with, our soul's wisdom. It's all tied up in that, in that voice. And it's edging us towards who we are, why we're here, our purpose. Like people are constantly seeking, you know, seeking some form of, you know, spiritual connection, connectedness, God, call it what you want. But there's a, there's a seeking that's there and um, our intuitive nature is connected to that. And that voice is constantly attempting and gently and lovingly steering us towards why we're here and what who we are and the gifts that we have and ultimately our purpose here. And I see and I've seen a lot of people who don't know why they're here or don't have that connection to their body and heart end up just being lost and and feeling like I don't know why I'm here what what's the meaning of life right all those questions start to come up what's my purpose here and then the people who do by contrast connect with that part of themselves more are on path they're in alignment with who they are they're rocking what they're doing they've found fulfillment in their life and it's such the opposite 
of what we've been sold and told by, you know, by society or what's pushed through the media of like, oh, you'll find fulfillment through these things here. And it always ends up leading to a dead end. And it's always ends up being something outside of us rather than something that we came with um, that's within us. So learning how to tap into um, this part of ourself, the heart space and the wisdom of the heart is so profoundly different than just living from the neck up, living disembodied or checked out or, or numbed out in the body where all we have left is this. And then the dialogue that comes with it, I can understand why people are suffering, right? And in different ways or ch feeling challenged in different ways because there's a disconnect from a really big part of who we are. I resonate a lot with that word seeking. And that was actually mm -hmm. something I was planning on talking with you about because you you divulge in your content that after your first yoga class, you felt this intense desire to fill in the word seek. Mm -hmm. The reason I resonate with that so much is I was severely misaligned going out of high school, going into college. A lot of pieces of my life were misaligned and it wasn't a quick burn, wake up from hypnosis type feeling. It, it was more a few dominoes fell that increasingly intensified that desire to seek. Yes. If you could just talk about what's your advice to people who are seeking. So first of all, seeking what or seeking what you're talking about within us, what is it that people are looking for or hoping to find? And what's yeah. your advice to people who maybe they are aware enough to know they're seeking, but they haven't yeah. found what they're seeking? Right. Okay. It's big questions here. Wow, Trevor. I love it. Um, okay. So the first question, the ones who aren't aware that they're seeking, let's start there. Um, and to use your example, like it, it wasn't this big moment of epiphany. It was like little dominoes that kind of, and I'll just clarify too. It was that for me too. It was like the little dominoes that led up to the big epiphany. And so what I would say to um, the seeker who may not know they're seeking, but just is having this angst or this feeling like something's missing and they're just not feeling aligned and not really sure where to go. I would start with pay attention to the little dominoes. Don't write them off. Like, like start just, uh, it, again, it goes into that like witness consciousness, like taking a, a stand back kind of bigger view of your life and what's actually happening. Um, because again, with the mind, we can get caught in what's not working and what's not enough and scarcity. And like, that's our focus. And so if we're stuck in that, we miss the dominoes. We miss the little signs and nudges that we get um, that point us towards that are, again, it's like this little bit of like edging that's happening that's always there. Um, so if I could even plant a seed of awareness in your audience's mind or consciousness around it's happening all around you right now, these little dominoes or these little nudges. And to just have knowing that, start looking for them and start paying attention to them and not writing them off and understanding that they are steps. There are little, there are steps on the path to maybe, yeah, at one point there, it's going to build up to this epiphany moment. It doesn't always look like that. It's going to be different for everybody. But I can say that everybody's got these little moments of like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's, hold on a second. Let me just back up and pause with that for a minute and get curious, lean in and give less attention as much as you can to the dialogue up here that's keeping us from seeing or being open to something else. So that's what I would say initially to the people who aren't aware. And then the people who are like, yes, I'm seeking something, but I don't know what I'm seeking. <laughs> um, I would say number one, congratulations that you you understand that on a spiritual level, level there's a seeker in you. And there, we're, we're seeking something more than the mundane that's here. And even within the mundane that that's here, there's, there's the spirit, there's the spirituality, there's something even greater. Um, so what I would say to people who are uh, aware that they're seeking, 
uh, is to keep leaning into that seeker aspect of self and let it guide you. And most of the time, it's not going to make sense to the mind at all where it's guiding you. And I can tell you this from every time I've been guided to something, I never got the full picture. I never got why. I literally just had to trust. And this was a big piece I wanted to bring around this particular conversation is it is going to require trust. Um, and this is how we learn. Like it's like an embodied uh, learning about how to trust and trust ourselves, trust our guidance, trust our intuition, trust the wisdom in our heart that it does know something. And then there is more than the mind. Um practicing courage, practicing faith, all of these things are a big piece of this. Uh, so whatever those little nudges that show up or little signs or things that kind of hit a little different when they when they do show up, pay attention and lean in. Lean in to, to where you're feeling called, pulled, tugged at, curious about, even if it doesn't make sense, because it won't. <laughs> And it won't make sense until you actually take the step. And this is where the courage and the faith and the trust come in to walk through it. And then as you walk through it, it's all going to start to reveal itself to you. And then that's how your courage grows. That's how your faith grows. That's how your trust grows. But it doesn't grow if you stay over here and just stay in question and never walk. Does that make sense? It does. It's beautifully said. I I am a living example of that because... Back maybe eight, nine years ago, I wrote out in a journal something along the lines of, I don't know how, but I feel compelled to make a difference in the world through health and wellness. Mm -hmm. At that time, I wasn't doing anything with health and wellness besides the typical bro routine at the gym. That was uh -huh. my impact on the health and wellness world at the time. But <laughs> fast forward, I ended up like you said, perfectly leaning into that. And there was some semblance of a logical plan. So thinking, you know, from the neck up, but more than right. that, a lot of it was just jumping out of the airplane, hoping I would find the parachute on the way down. And it turned out to be the case where I was leaning on intuition quite a bit in that pursuit, in that yeah. seeking. And it yeah. led me to working at several different gyms, learning different modalities, going from fitness to nutrition, to mindset, to recovery, learning about the back end pieces of health and wellness that you don't think of when you think health and wellness. And now fast forward, I still feel like I'm just getting started, but now I have all of these scopes of practice that I can help people with and all these avenues in which I can deliver and it is a good case study to show proof that yeah. sometimes all you need is that undeniable knowing that you can't logically work out in your head. You can't That's... justify to someone else. It's like seeing something crazy, not being able to get a photo of it. And then, you know, you're never going to be able to prove to someone else that you saw the thing, but you know, <laughs> for sure. What right. for you is an example in your life of a time where maybe logically it didn't make sense or to other people, it didn't make sense, but you just knew. Oh man, so many times. So let's see, which story do I want to pull up for this one? Um, I would, I would actually go back to, because it, it was such a um, profound, pivotal moment in my life. I mean, I've had a lot of pivotal moments. I just had another one last year. I mean, they just keep happening, right? Um, but I'll go back far enough because I feel like it just started this ripple, you know, kind of like what you were saying, like it in the very beginning, it didn't make any sense, but then it just kept rippling into this next thing and this next thing and this next thing which I feel like is evidence that our, our, pa our path, our purpose is predestined. It's already written. It's already done. We just have, our job is to pay, listen and to get in alignment with it. Right. And that's, that's our free will that we get to exercise or not exercise and do whatever we want with. 
Um, but for me, I think it was when I was right before I found that first or the first yoga class or the first yoga class that found me, we could look at it both ways. I was in a lot of pain and suffering, uh, in my, my mind and in my body because I had experienced whatever traumas that I experienced growing up. Right. I don't think any human <laughs> gets through life without going through some form of trauma or multiple traumas. Um, and I could sense and feel in my body that if I didn't, if I didn't handle it and I didn't know how, if I didn't take care of it, it was going to destroy me. Like I could just, that's the only intuitive feeling that I had. I was like, this is not going to be good long-term if I can't handle this. I could feel the pain in my body, the stiffness, and then the constriction in my mind and lack of connection to a degree uh, to, to my body, right? Because when there's trauma, what do we want to do typically is get out of there. <laughs> we don't want to feel it. It doesn't doesn't necessarily feel like a safe place to be. Uh, so out of nowhere, wasn't necessarily seeking intentionally, oh, I'm going to go seek yoga. Um, I had just kind of heard about it at the time. This was, you know, way back in my early twenties. And I was like, well, I haven't tried it before. And something in me said, go. And I went, okay, I'll go having really no idea what it was. Um, and then I went and of course the, the whole class, I couldn't do anything. I was so inflexible, couldn't touch my toes because there was so much tension and trauma stored in my body um, that hadn't been dealt with. Couldn't like the whole thing was painful, but on the other side of that class, I walked out lighter, more grounded, more connection. I could feel energy flowing through my body. I could feel myself again. And I felt this relief and release that I had no idea was available to me through the, through the body and through doing something like that. And I got really curious about it. It just, it just blew my mind. And so this is the leaning in part it says, I don't know what this was. I literally said this to myself. I'm like, I don't know what the heck that was or what's happening to me right now, but I need to know. And so that started on the path of studying body-based work, uh, became a massage therapist, you know, started doing all this. And I, and I realized I, I had a love of the body and I had a fascination with the body through that. And that would step me onto the path of body-based work and embodiment. And of course, yoga, I just went straight down the rabbit hole and learned so many things. And then in that process, I healed. I transformed. I got to see my traumas unravel. I got to see on the other side of, wow, when we do something beyond the mind and we actually give attention to the body, there's so much below the neck that's available for us that gives us access to so many aspects of being human, but also being a soul in a human body or spirit in a human body. There's so much more to us. So it opened up all this uh, awareness and knowledge of how multidimensional we actually are. That's a deep rabbit hole you went down. I'm sure you're, you're still yeah. searching for the bottom of that rabbit hole as are oh, a lot endless. of people. <laughs> yep. So yeah. I want to draw a tangent because mm -hmm. you also are highly successful in business. You've helped other people become highly successful in business. And a lot of what we've talked about to start is personal, the personal seeking, identifying for the individual, how to understand what dialogue is coming from your heart versus your mind. Yeah. Now let's draw the tangent to business because right before we started recording, we almost didn't record this because we probably almost got into just an hour long conversation on this topic, but this idea of heart led business, mm -hmm. this is something at the front requires a lot more work and intentionality as I am learning in process right now. Yeah. But walk me through for yourself, for the people you've worked with and for the people listening, the power of whatever you do for your endeavor, whether mm -hmm. it's obviously you primarily work with entrepreneurs and business owners, but whether it's they're working a nine to five job, they're running their own business, 
whatever the situation may be, this concept and the power behind heart led business or work. Yeah, it's, it's huge. So I'll start with the people that I have worked with. And what I heard a lot is working at jobs or doing something that isn't fulfilling to them. And they're only working for the paycheck and, and sold the idea that that's, that's your ticket. Right. And while yes, money is important. Yes, we need it. Uh, for many reasons. And it's, I don't see it as a bad thing. It's just another tool and it depends on how you use it. Right. That's a whole rabbit hole. We're not going down today. I know, but um, in terms of heart led business, it's helping people to get in touch with doing something in their life that is aligned with who they are. There's the heart again and aligned with their gifts and what they're here to do and being of service in some way, because when we give is where the fulfillment comes back. When we give of who we are and we see it benefit others, that's full circle. That's coming back and creating this fulfillment and then doing that in a way that does support us financially icing on the cake, right? It's like the ideal. Um, so if we're just going after the paycheck then we're in kind of just survival. That's mind again. That's like, I just, I'm in survival. I need to just get money so I can do the thing. But then we're just, now we're neck up again and we've forgotten ourselves and and why we're doing what we're doing. So heart led is tapping into the heart and really the vision, vision is heart to me, vision, heart, they're kind of in the same, is vision is what do you really want? You know, what is it, what is really calling to you? And it, and it asks each individual to get in touch with that deeper aspect of themselves, right? And to pause for a minute and ask and not this knee-jerk reaction of, well, I just have to survive in this world, but what about if we could merge worlds? So it's, it's not about throwing the mind out either. And I wanted to be clear about that too. It's not just favoring the heart and like the mind's of no use. It's, it's, it is of use, but it's just putting it in its right place. And so when, I, when we're talking about heart-led business, we're starting with heart. What do you want? What's your vision? What's really the ideal for you? And I, you know, walk people through a vision mapping process to find that out for them as an individual. And then we unpack that. Then once we've got that, then we design the business around that, not the other way around going, okay, I'll, I'll design the business. It'll make me the money. But yeah, what about you? Are you going to be happy doing this? Is it going to be fulfilling for you? Because if it isn't, it won't last. The, the, the fuel behind longevity in business and where, where I think we're evolving in human consciousness is realizing just working for the paycheck is not sustainable. It costs us more money in the long run because our well-being goes down. You can relate to this. Our health goes down. Our happiness goes down. I mean, it just costs us way more. We're not showing up as the fully embodied, fulfilled person for the people we love in our life. They don't get the best version of ourselves. I mean, there's so many costs to it long term. And then uh, we spend so much of our time on earth in our life working, don't we? More than anything else, maybe sleeping. I don't know. It depends how much sleep you need in a night. <laughs> but we do spend a lot of our time creating or working or so if we're going to spend that many that many days hours weeks years in our life doing something to produce money so we can live in the way that we want to why not have it be something that we love so we don't feel like we just wasted our life away and that we actually left a mark of some kind of imprint or impact where we made our own unique contribution to the world that we can walk away or fin close our life out and go, yeah, I did that thing. You know, and I left a mark that I can feel good about in my heart, in my consciousness, rather than like, I don't know what that was all about, but okay. You know, <laughs> the Jim Carrey and for anyone who's in the self-development world, in the spiritual seeking world, there's a good chance they've already seen this this clip, but Jim Carrey is giving a speech and he talks about his dad was, I don't remember what his actual profession was, so I'll throw probably the wrong one in there and say a plumber. <laughs> well, his dad growing up 
was very much a comedian, always wanted to be a comedian, but he took the realistic path and went to be, again, probably not, but we'll say a plumber. After however many years of faithful service to the job, doing well, showing up, he got he got fired. And so what this taught Jim Carrey is you can fail at what you don't love. So why not take a shot at failing at what you do love? And that Perfect. is something that has stuck with me for so long Amazing. is this concept of you can feel as secure as you want and have all of the quote unquote boxes checked in your head of what will pave a secure path. But there are so many unknowns outside of oneself that yes. you just never really know. And so the other piece is we don't know how long we'll be here. We don't know if we have a day or a hundred years left on this earth. That's and correct. so to be able to commit to going all in on doing something you love that benefits and adds value to others that makes you feel good about the contribution you're making and yields the financial results that you need. To me, that's having your cake and eating it too. But I am curious for you because for a good few years at the start, I was in the boat of trusting that intuition really leaning in, knowing undeniably this is what I wanted to do, but there was no financial stability coming from it. What do you say to the person who says, I know this is my path. I know this is what I have to offer to the world. I'm yeah. trying to do it, but I'm just not seeing it work. Yeah. What do you do with people then? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, there's so many things, but the first thing I would say, and I had to learn this too, because when I first started, you know, you start on your own. And as a beginner, I didn't know any better, like the benefit of having a mentor to actually help me get to reach my goals. And so I'm sitting here, you know, brand new entrepreneur trying to figure it out all myself. And, and it's a lot. Uh, to try and take on on your own, not knowing what you don't know about business. And I will say that uh, it took it took years for me to get to like, oh, wow, like I can kind of relax in the financial realm because I'm I've sorted this out. So in the beginning, it wasn't overnight either. But the, I didn't have a mentor at that time. And so something that I've learned for myself is we go so much further and faster when we have someone that we trust, it's, I mean, this is a key, you got to find a mentor that you resonate with and that you trust. That's really important. Who has your best interest in mind, who knows they can help you. You know, you got to do your research there and your due diligence, but finding that person is so key. And when I finally did, it was like a rocket ship. And I know I'm that for my uh, clients as well, where they're classically wanting to go this way. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like I had a client actually tell me one time, like, you're like bumpers in the bowling alley. You're keeping me in the lane. You know, you're keeping me on track because we don't know what we don't know. And we think, oh, I'll try this. And oh, I'll try this. And it's kind of all over the map. But if you have someone there who's walked before you and knows the, the path, it can say, actually, no, <laughs> let's not do that. that. That'll be a waste of your time or whatever, whatever the thing is, is such gold. And then also someone who sees you, who sees your vision with you, who sees you um, and can walk with you in that way is also gold. So that's really, really a big one. That was a big game changer for me. That's when I really started to see uh, the financial gain happen is when I actually hired help. And that took a big risk, you know, for me on my part, because I had never invested in a mentor before. I didn't know what that was going to be like. And it was a big chunk of money that I didn't have. <laughs> mm. So it was, it was like twofold. It was one, I was betting on myself because I had to show up too. And then also, you know, hoping that this was going to work out and, and it did. Part of that was me deciding, and this is a betting on myself, me deciding, okay, if I'm going to invest all this money into ultimately myself, not the mentor, they're going to help me, right? But ultimately I'm investing in myself. 
if I'm going to do this and I have to make a decision that I'm all in, I have to make a decision that I'm fully committed to this and I'm going to see this through. And then that decision, and this is a big piece of what I teach people also that ties to the mind and the heart as well, is the catalyst for the growth also. Because even with a mentor, there's going to be, it's a swirly path. It's never a straight line, right? There's going to be ups and downs, and but it does help. But the other side of the coin is that powerful decision to go all in on yourself is humongous because that casts a vote out into the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, the quantum field that that sends that message out. And then the support, the unconditional love, the guidance comes right back in. And then it's something that we commit to not once, not twice, every day. We say, this is what I'm doing. I'm all in. You wake up in the morning and you're doing it all over again. It's not like a one hit wonder. And that's really the game changer. And and be, I'll tell you why. And this is why it connects to the heart and the mind. When you make that commitment and you say that to yourself, to your mentor, to whoever, to the universe, whatever you're saying, is when you step onto that path, you're inevitably going to hear the same battle you've always heard, whether in life or business, where the mind's going to say, oh, you can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not qualified enough. Who are you to think? Blah, 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 blah. blah. And the heart's going or your intuition's going and no, but this is your path and you're called to this and here's your trust. Here's the game on again. Right. And so within that bouncing back and forth, that conversation, it's your commitment to this, to the heart and to your path and what you're feeling called to that catapults you forward. And that leads you to the next thing and the next step in the right place. So what I've gathered so far is Step one is awareness. I agree with that 100%. If you are unaware of what it is that you're even seeking or you're unaware that you are seeking, step one is, again, hopefully this conversation, if someone's listening to it, inherently is the added awareness. Step two, clarity around what it is you're seeking with the understanding that you're probably looking for it externally and it probably lies within. And then from there, it's establishing yourself and your environment in a way that's conducive to pursue the search. Knowing that I, ideally, the search will continue forever because it, it is an infinite game, right? It you is, you yep. find one answer, which opens up a hundred more doors to a hundred more answers that you can go play around with. But Exactly. It, and that's the adventure. That's the adventure. If we can see that as we're not getting to the end point, there's no end point. It's like we we're here now and, and the now is like, okay, well, is it in alignment? And then if it takes you to the next thing, it's like, go on the adventure, be adventurous. Cause the more you go, the more you're just going to learn about more about who you are and why yeah. you're here. It never ends. Yeah. I really liked kind of tying back to something you said that I went past initially, but I want to circle back to it is you were talking about predetermined destiny, essentially being alignment and free will is God, the universe, Santa Claus, whatever you believe in (laughs) giving you permission. If you so choose to sway from alignment, but the predetermination is I, we, whatever it is, has instilled this undeniable knowing that this right here is the most aligned path for you. We will give you the dialogue from the heart. We will put the situations in your life to course correct you, but you have to go all in on the search. You have to continuously pursue seeking and being that aligned path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this that. Is, this is a good reminder for me too. This is a good good reminder to make sure that especially a workshop that I'm putting together for next weekend is all about an energy audit. So I, I figured, you know, it's tax season, so I might as well call it the audit. And 
it it really is. I think a big piece of this seeking is understanding yeah. not just what to find and add, but what to shed. Yes, huge. So what's huge. your take on, I mean, we already touched on the career piece. If you feel the most scary word to me is tolerable. I, I don't want to be part of anything that's tolerable. We kind of touched on the career piece of that naughty word, but what's <laughs> what's your advice to people who maybe they know what they're going after? It's not necessarily mm. a, a need for addition, but a need for shedding and subtraction. What's yeah. your quick two cents on that? Okay, so we're talking about people who are already established. They're they're not necessarily seeking anymore, but they're hitting a ceiling kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, we'll say tolerable relationship, tolerable career, mm -hmm. tolerable mm -hmm. financial situation, yeah. tolerable health, but nothing great. Okay, gotcha. Yes. I love that you brought the shedding piece up. This is a key piece too. Um and this is part of like the body-based transformation that I that I teach and lead people through is it inherently starts with shedding. And what the shedding is, it's like you are letting go, right? You're shedding what isn't you or what's got an expiration date on it. Not every relationship or every season of life is meant to be forever. It, it may just be for a time to move you to the next evolution in yourself. And then once you've hit that evolution in yourself, it's like that thing that was once the greatest thing ever maybe not that it isn't any, any, any less valuable, but it it's time's up. It's time to let it go. So then the next thing can come in. So what I often have people do is bless and release, honor it for the gift that it gave because it did for a time. And then also honor that it's complete. It served its mission in your life for whatever it was meant to be. And if you're getting all the signs and feeling or feelings or just like contractions in your body or that, oh, this isn't feeling the same anymore. Feels like it's expired. It's not no longer aligned because that can happen. Um, then we bless and release and we move on to the next thing. That's a, more of a match for where we've, we've evolved to, right? So we, we don't always stay on the same floor, right? Whatever ceiling we're looking up at, that's where we're going next. That's going to be our new floor. And to get from the current floor to the next floor, right? To bust through that ceiling oftentimes means we're going to let go of something, whether it could be a relationship, even a mentor. Sometimes that's not forever either. Um, whatever it is in our life that it's fulfilled, it's, it's time. It's served us in the way that it was meant to. And it's simply complete. And so I think that is a huge key piece to be aware of too. Nothing is forever. We're obviously not going to be here forever. And so chapters and seasons of our life are the same way and to honor those. And I think about that in my own life. There's how many seasons and chapters I've had where it's like, I'm almost this radically different person than I was way back then. Or if people reach out to me that I knew in my twenties and they reach out to me now expecting me to be that same person, it's like, I'm not her anymore. There may be aspects of her that's in there and certainly part, but I've moved on, you know, and I've allowed myself to keep growing and keep evolving um, and keep and keep evolving and keep just keep going. Right. So um, that's a that's a really big piece is not let yourself get stifled to that point of tolerance where, OK, now I'm just tolerating this because this is it. Don't put that ceiling over yourself. It isn't it. There's always more. Beautifully said, as yeah. everything else you've said. All right. <laughs> so I, I will slowly start to wrap it up. I would be kicking myself, though, if I didn't ask you this question. Biohacking. <laughs> or someone who maybe they've heard the word and that is all right. they know about biohacking. Right, right, what right. is or what are one or two of the most fundamental biohacking tips you can give to anyone listening that will make a, a significant impact. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I imagine a lot, there's different people who would define it in different ways. Um, the way that I would define it and you, and have used it for the last 30 years is, um, number one, I, I, it's a lifestyle, it's a mindset and it's a way of relating to the body. And it's understanding that our bodies are incredible and have an innate intelligence that came with them that if we tap into that and we honor that. So it's another reason why not to live from the neck up. We get in, in the body, not running from the body, but actually get into it and partner with it. That we discover that innate intelligence that we have access to greater vitality, health, and longevity than is taught in mainstream medicine or uh, mainstream thought around the body where we're tolerating aging. And we're going to bring up that word again. There, there's so much of this, that in there too, where when we're biohacking, we are aligning with that innate intelligence of our body, giving it what it needs, which isn't chemicals, which isn't pesticides, which isn't any of that stuff. It's all natural from the earth. Um, innate to what we can thrive in. And if you give the body what it needs, it will thrive. It'll know exactly what to do to bring itself into balance, to function the way it needs to function that we don't even have to think about. It just does it on its own. But again, our job in partnering with it is knowing how to treat it, knowing how to honor it, knowing how to feed it, knowing how to respect it. And then I'll take this one step further to just tie everything together is that when we are able to have a higher level of vitality than we've ever been shown or taught and get to experience that, that ties into how we show up in life. We have the vitality to grow the business that we love long-term or uh, attract a relationship that is really a reflection of, of who we are because we're not numbed down and dumbed down by toxic food or toxic chemicals or disease or imbalance of any kind, it gives us the space and the energy to realize our full potential. So all of these things are so intricately tied um, to, you know, living our best life as we would say, and feeling fulfilled uh, in life. That is exactly why I, went all in on doing what I do is I'm a big believer that health is the ground floor to a great life and just a great experience because, and I tie in most people when they think health, they think lifting weights, running and eating broccoli, but right. health is mental, emotional, spiritual, yeah. physical, social, environmental health. Yep. But I like that idea of really being sure that you're in tune and aligned with what your body needs. I like that word partnership. You are in a partnership with your body for a couple of reasons. One, it proves there's something that you are made of that is not your body, which I agree with. But also it's that sense that much like you would take care of a friend or family member who needs your help, your right. body is a hopefully a loved one that needs your help and you are the parent of it. You choose what goes into it in terms of food, in terms of sensory input, what you're watching, who you're around, all those things. Yeah. So that, I, I really like that. If I gave you a microphone and every other human being on earth an earbud and will say, <laughs> magically, I snap my fingers, everybody speaks English now. And you could deliver one message that you think the world needs to hear right now. What what would you say to everybody? Woo, that's a powerful one. It's always different every time somebody asks me this or I think about this myself. It's always interesting to see what comes out. Um, I would let people know that whether they're aware of it or not, they're seeking. They're a seeker. There's a seeker in everyone. And it shows up in different way in different ways that maybe for the unaware. They're seeking through, well, I don't know what else to do. So I'll reach for alcohol or I'll reach for whatever it is. But even through that, those kinds of reaches, what are they, what are they seeking for? There's something missing that they're reaching to fill, right? 
So I would say to the world to consider that you are a seeker and that you are seeking something more and higher and to however that's showing up for you is to get curious about it and to lean into it and see where it takes you. Understanding that, like we said earlier, it's not going to make sense to the logical mind, but there is something more. That's what I want people to know. Say yes to the adventure of a lifetime. All right. And then last question. This one's always just for my curiosity. So for you right now in your life, what is the next step in you becoming your best self? I would say there's the project that I'm, that I'm building out right now with, uh, being led (laughs) and finally deciding to release all the 30 years of biohacking knowledge that I've been living and haven't really shared up until now. Um, it's a new, it's a new endeavor. It's like the next thing. Um, that I'm being guided to do right now. So I'm leaning into that. And it's literally everything that I've I've shared. I'm trusting the process. I'm leaning in. I'm excited about it. You know, people are responding. I can see a need for it. Um, sure, there's a lot of uncertainty that's around it, but I've, you know, I've been in this game long enough to know that's what comes with it. And so here we go again, right? And let's see where this this adventure leads, but what I'm feeling in all of it is it feels right. It feels in alignment and we'll see where it goes. It's so amazing to have someone lead from the front who actually practices what they preach. It's commonplace nowadays, I think, to have people who have the fun quips. They have the, you know, great one-liners. They have all of the right answers. But to see someone who you're saying, make sure that you continue seeking, make sure you continue leaning in and trusting. And then to follow up and say, by the way, I just had this epiphany that I'm really uncertain about how it's going to roll out, but I'm trusting it. I'm seeking, I'm leaning in. And I guarantee it's going to work out because it's you and you crush the projects that you work on. But yeah, that's the last piece I want to just let people know about is find someone who doesn't just talk the talk because there's a lot of people who are fantastic at talking the talk. Find yes. someone who actually puts their money where their mouth is, quite literally puts money where their mouth is, but in terms of their actions, in terms of how they move, how they speak, how they just portray themselves verbally and non-verbally. So Daniela, I will wrap it up with that. Thank you so much for coming on. I want to give you just a a couple minutes to let people know where they can keep up with you, how they can get involved with what you're working on, all the stuff you want people to know. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for that wrap up. And again, thanks for having me. Uh, So yeah, if people want to be in touch, I'm all over social media. My Instagram account is my first and last name. I've got multiple (laughs) Uh, because I've built multiple things. Uh, Facebook I'm on, YouTube channel, LinkedIn. Uh, Social media is a great place to to get in touch. And then through there, if they are interested in, you know, being in closer communication through my email list, I do send out a lot of valuable uh, content for people to chew on, those kinds of things. And then as as far as the uh, biohacking goes, if people are feeling particularly called to that, I am offering uh, free biohacking health audits. There's that word again, um, where I give them a full thorough audit of, you know, where they are in their, in their health and vitality. And based on my experience, I'll give them the top two things that I can see that jump off the page, uh, where they could focus on the most that will have the most impact, uh, for bringing their vitality and, and health to the next level. So if they're interested in that, they can reach out to me privately through any of those social media outlets and, and I'll hook them up. Very generous of you. Well, thank you again for coming on. I, If someone listened to that and they didn't get value, they didn't actually listen to it. But <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. Everyone who's listening, especially if you've made it to this point, thank you so much. I always hold a lot of respect for those who are being intentional about seeking out the people, the information, 
that will help you in whatever it is you're seeking, whatever it is you're trying to level up to and push through that ceiling. If you liked this video, there is a like button you can click. If you have comments, questions, concerns, agreements, disagreements with anything we said, throw them in the comments. And if there's someone you know who is unaware or they're seeking, but they don't have the answers yet, or they can find value in anything that we discussed, please share it with them. That's why we make these is so that we can add value to as many people as we can. But thank you, everybody. And we will catch you next time. Peace.